So after a summer of flooding across the U.S., things got dry, like real dry and real quick. But here's the kicker. One of the same reasons we saw flood after flood after flood throughout the summer season is the same reason that drought was able to come back so fast. Let's talk about climate change and drought for just a second. As of the October 9th drought monitor, 73% of the U.S. is dealing with conditions that are considered at least abnormally dry, one foot into the potential for drought. Nearly half the country is dealing with some sort of drought condition. So historically, when we looked at drought, we just talked about precipitation trends, rain and snow. In grandpa's day, in times of drought, if there weren't enough rain, we just waited out. Water would come again eventually. But here's what's changed. A warmer atmosphere is a thirstier atmosphere. So for every degree of warming, it can hold on to about 4% more moisture. Think of it this way, like it's a, it's a growing sponge. It's a bigger sponge and it doesn't just absorb, but it can also take from things that hold water naturally, like trees and plants and the soil. And this means that we can slip into flash droughts faster and crawling out of them, well, it's way harder, even with a decent rainfall. And then you add in heat waves and unusual early fall heat, and we just keep digging ourselves into a deeper hole. So the Western US has been dealing with this for years, and research shows that it's likely not going to change as we continue to pump heat trapping pollution into our atmosphere. This impacts our water supply, agriculture, growing veggies in your garden, and it also allows for a longer, more intense wildfire season across the country. So the atmosphere is in its thirsty era, but we still have time to convince it otherwise. If you want to see the data and the details about climate change's impact on worsening droughts, we've got it up for you right now. It's at climatecentral.org.